Dad, have you ever seen a ghost? Yeah. Once I see one. How, how did you know it was one? Well, I know, right? I don't need it to wear a label, ghost. What did it look like? It looked like a big, tall woman with long skirts and a veil over the head. And when I'm getting close, 30 yards away only, it started to turn around. And then? And then it vanished. How did you know it wasn't a, an optical illusion? A trick of the light? If you see one, you know. And I'll go and have your breakfast. Get more done without you. Trick of the light. No talking, please. You may sit down. Of course I talked about it. I just want to be sure. Read up, Benny. Hundred lines each. Yes, Laura. Uh, Bruno and Benny are a bit upset this morning, Miss Knightley, because they saw a ghost last night. Thank you, Laura. I don't think that Bruno and Benny need a solicitor quite yet. No, Miss Knightley. Take out your exercise books, please. So, Bruno, you saw a ghost last night, did you? I think so, Miss Knightley. But you're not sure. Yes, I am sure, Miss Nally. I think. I see. Well, did you see one or didn't you? Yes. Well, make up your mind, then. How come you doesn't want to talk about it? Man, a better watch, that's all, Mum. We must get a proper crow scare, that is what we need. Scarecrow, Mum. I thought Bruno was getting one from the Schmidt's place. I'm sorry, Mum. I forgot. I'll get it this evening. Why does he keep his scarecrows out here? It's miles from anywhere. Yeah, I know. Look at them all. So big. Mr. Schmidt said to take anyone we wanted. Hey, maybe it was one of these things we saw last night. Someone set up for a joke. No. Oh, didn't flap, did it? Sort of floated. What's that? Do not sit down on the road in the middle of the night. Tonight, I leave that Dunkoff horse at home. And don't be looking too much at the vine bottle. I go to Kapanda. I don't like it, Mutter. It's a woman, all right. It goes to see a woman. And leaves us on our own. Oh, come on, Ben. Hang on a sec. Where go? What are you doing? Maria Rollenberg rides again. <laughs> All right. Hold the bike. Let's get out of here. Ready? <laughs>
sake, Bruno. Bruno, what do you think you're doing? I got your scarecrow, Mum. I am asking you whose clothing this is and how did you get it? Hmm? Berta, it's enough. Who it belong to? This woman you go to see in Capanda? It was a bride I am seeing, the ghost of Maria Rollenberg. Bride? Oh. Bride's on the brain you have. Oh. What you do next, hmm? Marry this bride you always sing? And what happened to your poor dead brother's family? Who look after them? Someone who is deaf? You know what Uncle Gus is like. We tried to tell him, but he just wouldn't believe us. He already told everybody about it last night. Lottie heard it from six different people when she went into town this morning. Well, I hope she told them the truth. I thought it'd spoil it. Anyway, you and Benny saw in the garden, Schmidt. You did, didn't you? Bruno, didn't you? Can you wait out of time for your composition this week, Bruno? Oh, have you, Miss Nile? Would it be nine out of ten if it had been tidier? Yes, Miss Nile. Have you seen any more ghosts? No, Miss Nile. I think I made a mistake about the one at Garten Schmuck, Miss Nile. You mean the huge white headless spectre with blood on its shroud? It was the carcass of a bullock wrapped in calico. Mr. Hines and his son slaughtered them there and hanged them up on a beam in the courtyard. I know it sounds silly, but when you're there in the dark and you know it's supposed to be haunted, you start imagining things. Exactly. And then you start hearing things moving and you feel them all around you, sort of watching and waiting. And suddenly, you can hardly breathe. You're so scared. You described that very well, Bruno. I could almost feel I was there myself. But feeling isn't enough, is it? We have to have solid proof. My dad's seen a ghost. I mean, he really has seen Bruno, one. Bruno, you have to make up your own mind. That's why you get an education, isn't it? So you can do that. I speak to Marcus direct. Moment, Bertha. Gustav is having an accident in the motor car. 
Is he hurt bad? In Mutter Schubert's nursing home in Kapanda, he must rest for a few days. He has a little concussion on the head. Out of the wine bottle, you catch it. This concussion. Shh. I tell Bertha you take her to see him in the car tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, I take her. Are you there, Bertha? 462 miles. 462 miles at 25 miles to Kapanda equals 487 miles. At 25 miles back, it's making 512. Oh, these are Gustav Obst. Why couldn't he choose some other day to turn his car over? Now the 500 will be up just when we are coming home. And I will have to drain the oil on the road. In the middle of nowhere. Oh, goat he is. Perhaps we could wait until we get home, Dad. How? How can it wait till we get home? Bert Watson makes it very clear. Drain the oil at 500 miles means drain the oil at 500 miles. Not 499 or 501. 500. Understand? Yes, Dad. Nobody is going to say, Marcus Gunther, don't look after your things. <laughs> They're here, Mom. So I say to her. You want to play games with me, huh? Well, I show you something, madam. Uh, what did you do then? Well, like a rocket, she shoots towards me. And then, poof, under the front wheels of the car she goes. You ran over her. Already she is a ghost. <laughs> but a ghost she tries to make of me also. There was a full moon, Miss Dobbs. Do you think it could have been the light reflecting off the trees? Oh, no. Always a full moon. First, only the horses see her, and then I myself, when she is flying through the air, and her veil around her lovely face is floating. That was me with the scarecrow, Mr. Obst. Remember, I told you. Bruno, it's enough. She was wunderschön. So it's time to leave, Gustav. But I'll see you later. Yeah, Marcus, I stay here until Gustav is ready to go home. Mr. Obst is wrong. Your father is wrong. Your grandfather is wrong. Your great-grandfather is wrong. And all because you are playing a silly trick on Gustav with a scarecrow. But, Dad, that's how these stories get started. People want to believe them, so they don't even listen when you tell them there's a perfectly rational explanation. Who gave you this book? Miss Knightley. Miss Knightley? When Miss Knightley is living here for 20 years, perhaps she begins to understand something. What does it say now? The meter. A few beats off 500. Oh, Gustav, Gustav. Do you have to see the ghost now? Wait a day or two. Can't do it here, Dad. Ah, oh, you got to be a blasted carpet snake to get underneath there. Ah, missed. This pipe is red hot. Dad, it's only a few more miles to the garage. And put more money into Bert Watson's pocket? Why should I do that? You just can't drain the oil like this. Give me the tool. Stop! 
What? Just listen a moment. What? We're telling to listen. Listen, boy. I got enough. You learn the respect for elders. Well, I want to know the reason why. Not. Wait till I get this bird Watson. Now, verdammt, the Schwindler! But look at me! Was gibt's doch nicht? Die Beine, die Brust! Autos! Autos! Come on, let's go. Hey, Marcus. Bruno? Why am I glad to see you, Mr. Ryan? That's your car back there, is it? Yes, it is. Until I get her back to Bird Watson and Gananda. Bad luck, um, running out of oil like that. Out of oil? Hmm. I see you checked it yourself. Your car is running well. Oh, she's a little beauty. You drained the sump, I suppose. Change the oil at 500, then again at 1,000, like it says in the manual. Of course, I didn't do it myself. I took it to birth. Don't take yours to anyone else, Marcus. I heard of a chap took his to the garage in Capanda last month. They changed the oil all right. They just forgot to fill her up again. Fill her up again. Oh, heavens, you haven't been to Capunda already, have you, Marcus? Ten to one, that's what happened to yours. Yes. Ten to one. G'day, Bert. What have you been up to, Mark? <laughs> Try to drain your own sump, did you? <laughs> oh, yes, I drained the sump, all right. And if you would have a hot oil plug where your blasted navel is, I trained you too. What I need? Hot water! Yes, 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 yes. Come on, take your hands off me. I can do it by myself. No, no, no. Come on, let me help. Get your hands off me. Get some rice from me. Get some rice from me. All right, all right. Get your hands off me. Oh, Dad, look at your shit. Get your hands off me. I'm going to get it off his head. Only trouble. Dad, if you be quiet, oh, still, if it's a stop moving. Oh, look at this shirt. Oh. So what? So what? You want to have a car? What do you mean, so what? You've got good money. We don't Where do you know. think you're going? Talk to someone with a bit of sense for a change. Emma, 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 take a scrubbing. I can just imagine it. <laughs> Bert took one look at him and started to laugh. He said, Hello, Mark. Tried to drain your own oil, did you? <laughs> Marcus got this look in his eye, grabs Bert by the braces and lifts him clean off the ground. Yeah, I drain the oil all right. Wouldn't if you had an oil plug where your navel is, I'd drain you too. I mean, you wouldn't drain a horse without filling her up again, would you? <laughs> Next thing, we'll be hearing it was one of the ghoulies that did it. <laughs> oh, we shouldn't laugh at them, I suppose. <laughs> They're only ignorant.
Is there somebody there? No, not at all. Thought I heard someone. Probably one of Uncle Gustav's ghosts. Miss Knightley's. Alle lebenden Dinge sehen mit Hoffnung auf dich, oh Herr. Du gibst ihnen Nahrung, wenn sie es brauchen. Lieber Gott, himmlischer Vater, segne uns diese Speisen, die durch deine Großzügigkeit zu uns gekommen sind. Durch Jesus Christus, unseren Herrn. Amen. Amen.